all the people that is involved at the club that contributes on our daily basics to make our job easier and possible and obviously to the players who at the end of the day the ones on the field making a difference and help us to, to win the games and, and our supporters. So thank you very much. Can we get some team news, please? Are there any updates in particular, Thomas Partey, Zinchenko? Or Unfortunately, Sorgen? the update will be tomorrow when we have the, the last training session, and today is not uh, much to give. Now, when you play on Sunday, it will be the first game since your Europa League fixture against FC Zurich. Are you at all concerned about the loss of momentum um, going into it? It's uh, what happened. It was uh, obviously for a really important reason. And, um, and we are always available to play, but uh, there are police, there are authorities, and I um, know the people have to make the right decision, and the decision was made, and we have adapted our schedule to be as competitive as possible for Sunday, and uh, like any other team. Looking ahead to the game against Brentford now, um, you of course know how challenging it is playing against them. How much of a challenge is it when you consider their opening six games that they've managed to come back on three occasions mm -hmm. from behind to pick up a point? Well, I think they are a really good side. I think uh, what Thomas and the staff they've done there, uh, not only this year, over the years, I think is remarkable. Um, the way they have performed, the results they got against the top clubs as well, especially at home, um, just sets the tone and uh, what is going to happen on Sunday and we are very aware of how difficult it is going to be to, um, to beat them. Thank you, all the best of luck. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mikel. Hi. Um, we haven't seen you since the passing of Queen Elizabeth II, just wanted to see if you had a message. Well, that um, I think it's phenomenal what uh, the country has done. Um, I think it shows the level of respect and admiration and uh, and the legacy that the Queen has left um, in the lives of so many. And um, I think it was very emotional um, and coming from a different country culture to see that reaction, it was um, pretty special. So I think it tells a lot about um, who she was and, uh, and what is left behind her. Absolutely. Um, congratulations to the Manager of the Month Award. Thank you. Many managers don't want it. They talk about <laughs> the next game curse, but it's, it's a reflection, isn't it, on good recruitment and a good pre-season? It's a reflection of everything and you can have those two things and then you can lose football matches and you're not going to get this award. At the end of the day, it's about being consistent and trying to, to get all the right decisions every single day and then put them as much as possible in football games, which at the end decide the momentum of, of a football club. Obviously, you're going to check on the players with another training session tomorrow, but I want to talk about Emil Smith-Rowe. Mm -hmm. um, there was a video that he had some discomfort in the warm down after Manchester United. Can you give us more on that? And he, he looked visibly upset at some point. Yes, that's been an ongoing issue that uh, he's had. He's had some discomfort in the um, in the growing area. Unfortunately, it, he hasn't had any continuity this this season, and it's something that we are trying to assess, trying to help him as much as possible in any way that we can, um, because we need him fit, we need him available and we need him performing at the best level because he's such an important player for us and unfortunately um, for this period and period last year we haven't had him. Just on the international call-ups, um, no Ben White for England, uh, are you surprised by that and also is there a worry he's playing well at right back but if mm. he's playing right back then Gareth Southgate is overlooking him, uh, overlooking him at centre half? He's played in both positions, sometimes he's been selected, sometimes no. Um, I think to have versatile players that can play at the level that Ben can in both positions, a centre defender and fullback, is something, in my opinion, that any manager wants, especially when you go for a tournament, which a lot of things can happen. Uh, that's Gareth's decision and, and his coaching staff. And uh, what I can tell you that whenever Ben gets the call, he will be ready. Just on the Brazilians, because the Brazilian coach has, has, has visited here and he's got a good yeah. relationship with you and Edu, but I was a little bit surprised to see Gabriel Jesus not selected. Uh, have you been given a reason for that? I haven't. Um, what I have to do is try to convince the players that um, they have to continue to do that, put their head down, accept the decision that are made by the coach or the national team and give them even more reasons, if necessary, um, that it's so evident that they have to be selected. And that's the way the boys reacted, and there's nothing else uh, to comment. Finally, um, Arsene Wenger talking this week with David Dean's book launch. So he hasn't been back to Arsenal since leaving the club. Now, mm. I know you've got a good relationship mm. with him, and he bought you. But I was quite surprised that he's not back. 
Would you love to see him back at some stage? Do you say, he said he didn't want to be a problem. He wants to stay away from... Football. I would love to. Uh, I think he has explained it. Uh, I think he has every window, every door in this football club open whenever he is ready, whenever he feels it's the right moment to do so to do it. Um, he knows that from my side, he knows that from many other people at the football club and, and hopefully that will happen soon because I think that um, it will inspire and a lot of people are going to be so happy to see him back. It's funny because I just feel like, look at the Brentford game last year, there was Covid issues, injuries, it's a completely different Arsenal now isn't it? I mean, it's, mm. this is, is this more Mikel's Arsenal isn't it? This, this is Arsenal football club, it's um, everybody's club and everybody's contributing the right way. Obviously the context is changed, the environment is changed and uh, now we have to maintain it as it is uh, for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Miguel, are you well? I'm good, thank you. Um, just going back to Ben White not being an England team, um, Gareth Southgate always says that he'll pick players on form and Ben's clearly been on form for Arsenal this year. As a manager, how much, when you pick a player in your 11, how much is form ahead of trust and what a player has done before? Because when you look at it, Harry Maguire hasn't played for Manchester United yet, he is in the England team. Ben White has played well for Arsenal yet, yeah, isn't. I don't know. You guys take every time word by word, you know, as well. <laughs> every time we say something. But listen, Gareth picks the best team, the best squad that he believes is for now. It doesn't mean that it's going to be the, the case in in November. Uh, the squad that they have available is just incredible, and everything that we can do to help Ben, we are trying to do so. And I think Ben is giving uh, a lot of reasons to be selected, and um, that's all we can do. Because one player who was selected as well was Ivan Tony you're coming up against on Sunday. Um, a very unusual rise to the top. He was <coughs> at Newcastle, then went to Scunthorpe and by Peterborough and Brentford. Now he's got to where he, where he is. Just give us an idea of how you rate Ivan Tony. I think it's a great story. I think this country has had stories like this in the last few seasons. Uh, the same with Jamie Vardy and, and how that happened. Uh, I think it's extraordinary. Uh, that means that, again, the opportunities are open for everybody. Um, that is just about showing consistency, showing quality and, and belief. It can happen at any age. It's not something that is determined already that if you don't go through that phase in that period of your life, you cannot become a professional player, a top player, an international player. So I think it's a, it's a great thing again. Is it a typical English story? Would it happen in Spain? Uh, I don't know. I cannot think about stories like this that have been after so successful like that. But uh, I don't know. It's maybe something to think about. What about your opposite number on Sunday, Thomas Frank? I think he's done an incredible job. Um, himself, the coaching staff, and I think the club, the clarity, the philosophy and the vision that they had and how they have executed, how they are constantly evolving it. I think they deserve a lot of a lot of credit for uh, what they do. And we all know finally why last week was called off and, and why yesterday mm -hmm. PSV was called off. In a way, were you very relieved that your game at Brentford goes ahead because Otherwise, it would have been a long time from during yeah. to after the international. We needed to play. We want to play games. Uh, when you look at the schedule after the World Cup, especially, or what we have to go through October, we need to play the games because if not, it's going to be just uh, impossible. Thank you. Um, Mikael, we just clarify is Ben White actually fit? Yes. So he was left out. That was a selection thing. It wasn't a man. Yeah, yeah. he's fit. There's no problem there. Okay. Um, and I know you said that the team uses. Is tomorrow, but is anybody definitely ruled out at this stage? Tomorrow, whoever we have to rule out is going to be tomorrow. We have still those 24 hours to see if one or two um, can be considered tomorrow for training and for sure for selection, and um, and that will be key in the next 24 hours. Um, and just finally for me, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United, all not playing this weekend. How much of an opportunity is it for you to, to, to create a real gap when it's early September, mm. to create a real gap between you and those sides? We have to win our matches and uh, the other games at some stage have to be played. Everybody's going to play the same amount. But um, again, obviously seeing the table and, and where you are and where you want to continue to be, it's, it's always important because I think emotionally and, and in terms of belief, I think it's, it's helpful. Um, we saw in the Amazon documentary um, for the Brentford game at home last season that you used the tweet from Ivan Tony after the first game to try and motivate your players. Will you have any sort of similar team talk in the mind going into the game this weekend? I haven't. Have, I haven't 
write the script yet for the for that one. I'm sorry. Do you think you might use sort of the, the circumstances? If you have any ideas, just give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> Um, Michael, we didn't get a chance to speak to you, obviously, after the Zurich game, but you know, Marquinhos put in a hell of a performance over there, a goal and assist. Looked very emotional after his goal as well. It was clearly a big moment for him. How happy were you with the way he performed and the way he sort of stepped up when you, when you asked him to? I was looking more at the faces of the rest of the staff and players. Um, he's a player that is very popular. Um, with no English, just with his smile and his attitude has... Um, win the respect and admiration of everybody here and it was a big step for him because he hasn't played enough minutes with us but uh, we were willing to give him the opportunity I think he deserved it I think he took it really well um, and it's a player that uh, again he needs to keep developing and, and in order to do that we have to give them minutes and, and opportunities So we've not seen him in the Premier League yet but that was a sign that you know he's clearly get into the stage where he's going to be ready to compete? We want to build the steps and uh, when we have asked him to play with under 23 he's done incredibly well, his attitude always by every coach and player has been um, seen as it cannot be any better and uh, that's what we expect from the player so that's why he's getting, he got the chance against Zurich and he might get another chance very soon. And just lastly, I know you've spoken about team news, but Ukraine have announced that Zinchenko is injured and isn't travelling to join up with them during the international break. Can you just tell us what's happened with him and how serious it looks? Well, again, we have to wait till tomorrow to make uh, that decision uh, where he was um, on that moment and what we have decided to do for international week doesn't mean that we're going to decide the same for the weekend, so it's, it's something that we will address tomorrow. Hi, Mikhail. Um, just on Ben, I know last season he played in both positions as well against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. It was in the same game, he flipped positions. I was just wondering, did that come naturally to him or was it something that you've kind of had to talk about uh, over a long period of time? Not long, obviously, it needs talking because when you are thinking about doing something to maximise the resources that you have in the squad uh, and to have some... Uh, connection, there are some other options to play the way we want to play. You have to have the certainty that the player is happy to do so, that he feels capable of doing it, uh, because if not, it's just a waste of time. So that has to go both ways. I had those discussions with Ben. He's always been very open. I think he's really enjoying playing in that position. Uh, that's why he's been doing so well. And um, I think it's great for him at his age to be able to, to play in, in other positions. And with him and Tommy Asu, would it be a case of who suits an opponent more, or it, would it depend on what you want to do? As Both team? can play centre defender as well. Tommy has been playing left centre back uh, for the national team in Japan. When you look at his games, he's great. He can play as a left back because you could not tell if he's right or left foot player. Uh, so we have the options there and we have to utilise them the best possible way, especially with the amount of minutes that we're going to have in the next few weeks. And, um, and it's great that players are comfortable um, doing uh, more than one position. Mark? Okay, just going back to what Kai asked you about the, the Ivan Tony tweet last year, do, do you see that as a bit, of, a bit of banter or did you find that quite disrespectful to you and, and your players when you saw that tweet? Well, anybody can write whatever he wants and uh, I'm here to judge it, to read it if it's necessary and use it in the, in the way that I believe is most powerful. Would you be happy if, if you'd seen your players to send tweets like that about opposition? I try my players to act in a certain way and I'm happy the way they act. <laughs> That's the end of the live section.